working? No. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm going to be interviewing Taslima Nazreen, who will be with us very shortly. Uh, we're running very late, so we're going to cut the interview a little bit short so we can get back on, on track. Um, Taslima has been with us all day today. Uh, and uh, some of you will know something of her history. She's uh, a very well-known Bangladeshi writer who became, in effect, the Bangladeshi Salman Rushdie because she had a fatwa against her, uh, was threatened with extreme violence, had to leave her home in Bangladesh, went into exile, and the story of how she left and also the difficulty she's had in exile is a very interesting one, and that's what we're going to uh, discuss tonight, among other things. Um, so uh, I'm hoping she gets here soon, um, because otherwise I'm going to have to sit here and entertain you. Where is she? Right I can't see. Oh, it's behind. You're behind the camera, <laughs> Taslima. <laughs> Please join us. Thank you. I couldn't see you directly behind the camera over there. <laughs> so, I, I'm actually going to kick this off with um, some recollections of the very first time I met this Lima. And I'm going to talk about that because um, we, in this room, uh, I think there are a lot of people who are under threat. Uh, there are a lot of people who've been persecuted uh, and are facing persecution of various kinds. But I want to recall something of Taslima's beginnings as a writer. I went to Bangladesh as a visitor. I, I live in Britain and um, I'm from an Indian background. So I went across the border with a Bengali friend of mine. Uh, who speaks the same language as Taslima. So she came from the Indian side of the border, which she speaks and enjoys the same literature that Taslima, you know, creates. Um, and we went to see her in her flat. At that time, she was living in Dhaka, long, long before she went into exile. And we had heard of Taslima as a prolific writer who wrote in Bengali, in Bangla, and who, when we went there, was in a very sumptuous flat in a very nice part of Dhaka, the capital city of Bangladesh, and who was a wonderful hostess who served us an amazing meal. And she was already somebody who was creating waves and being very controversial, writing in the newspapers as well as, you, you had a column, didn't you, Taslima? Yeah. So you had a column and you'd also written some novels at this stage. This was long before the major trouble started. Yeah, I wrote some books. You'd written some books. Yeah. We're now f coming up for the you 20th anniversary of, uh, of Lodja, which is the famous book. I don't know if you'd written Lodja at that point. This was in... Which year? I'm trying to remember the year myself. It was when there was a rash of fatwas. There was fundamentalism rising in Bangladesh and there were a rash of fatwas in villages caused by these informal shalishes, informal tribunals that were mm. uh, ordering women to be stoned to death and so on. I, I want to say, because people think that parts of the Muslim world are all the same, this was highly unusual in Bangladesh. This was not something that you expected to happen or, you know, it was a strange event. But at the same time, you were actually living in urban Dhaka, having achieved a very successful career as a writer. That was my main point, that you weren't there because your wealth was inherited or out of some sense of entitlement, you had made a career as a writer with a very, very large following in Bangladesh at that time. Yeah, I also got a prestigious Bengali award, Ananda Puroshkar. I think you need to hold it. Ananda Puroshkar from West Bengal, India. Yeah, uh, people love to read my books. I wrote Lajja in 1993 after uh, Babri Mosque was demolished when in Bangladesh Muslim fundamentalists attacked Hindus. At that time I wrote Lajja. It was 1993 and book was 
Can you can you hear? Okay, you need to. Book the uh, Lajja was published in uh, February 1993. It was banned uh, in July 1993, and Muslim fundamentalists issued fatwa against me. They set price on my head um, in November, October, or November. But that was not because of Lajja. They were angry with me because I criticized Islam when I wrote uh, for women's rights. So Lajja means shame in Bengali, yes? And, but that book was also controversial because it was also about women and women's freedom. Uh, not really. Mm. I didn't write about women's freedom in no. that book. It was just facts and fiction. This documentary novel. Uh, Muslim fundamentalists uh, were angry with me for writing that book. It's because I blamed Muslim fundamentalists to torture Hindus, because Hindus were oppressed, Hindus were killed, and their houses were burned, and uh, their uh, temples uh, were destroyed, and Hindus were leaving for India. So I just wrote that story. It was not about women's rights. It was not about criticism of Islam. But the government banned the book because I blamed government for not protecting religious minority community. But my other books uh, that I wrote uh, for women's rights and against women's oppression um, got uh, that literary award from India, and also those were bestseller uh, in the bestseller list. And Muslim fundamentalists were very angry with me uh, because I criticized not only Islam, I criticized Islam so that they, they were angry with me. Uh, but you know, in those books, I criticized uh, anti women traditions anti-women cultures, customs, and also not only Islam, all religions, because I believe that women are oppressed because of religion. Well, I think um, the particular fundamentalists, who, I mean, there may have been many, but the Jamaat-e Islami was one of the groups that was in the forefront of the fatwa, as I remember. Is that, would you say that was right? Or uh, There mm -hmm. are many other small mm -hmm. uh, Islamic uh, groups, not only Jamaat mm. Islami. The man who issued fatwa against me, first fatwa, there were three fatwas actually issued against me in Bangladesh. The first fatwa is issued by a man called Habibur Rahman. He was uh, from an organization, from an organization called Sahaba Soinik Parishad. It means the, the organization of mm, soldiers of Islam. Like that. And then Jamaat Islami also were involved, was, uh, not only Jamaat Islami, other Islamic groups, and hundreds of thousands of fundamentalists were on the street. Uh, they demanded execution, uh, you know, they demanded my punishment for for criticizing Islam, and uh, they called general strike all over the country, and they, uh, they asked for my execution by hanging. And instead of taking action against those people who started killing people uh, and who destroyed public property, and the government, government instead of taking action against them, took action against me. In 1994, uh, government filed a case against me on the charges of hurting religious feelings of people. I had to go into hiding, and uh, it was really terrible. I didn't get any uh, house to, to hide. But, um, uh, you know, it was, uh, then I was forced to leave the country. How did you feel, how do you think that the, you had this huge following, that's why I wanted to talk about it. It wasn't, you were not an unknown person, you were somebody who 
uh, many people, men and women, loved your writing. You know, you, you spoke to their feelings. You didn't write from an elite point of view. You wrote to, to, the, to the experiences of a vast number of people in the country. So did you feel that audience disappeared? Did anybody stand up to defend you? How did you feel, you know, what happened to all those people who loved your writing when you were, you know, charged with having offended Islam? Yeah. At that time, people mostly who loved me remained silent because it was very dangerous to support me. When I was uh, looking for a place uh, to hide myself because arrest warrant was issued, so the police were looking for me and the, also the fundamentalists were looking for me. And the prison was not safe for me because uh, uh, police or any prisoner could kill me because religious feelings is very dangerous. So my lawyer advised me to go into hiding. At that time, I was surprised to see that people who loved my writings were silent. But it is, I am grateful to those people who gave shelter to me. But afterwards, I had to leave the country and then I found that all the progressive media who supported me remained silent. And in the last 20 years, all the fundamentalist media, they started, uh, you know, spreading all the, you know, against me. They, they started writing against me. And uh, young generation, I found that uh, don't know any, don't know much about me. They only wrote, only read the fundamentalist, uh, you know, mm, what they wrote about me, all the bad things. But also my books were banned in Bangladesh and it was kind of dangerous to read my books. And uh, so I, but still I found that uh, in social media and Twitter and Facebook, some uh, young generation started reading my books and supporting me. Well, a new generation came up, for instance, who started blogging and then several bloggers got into trouble and were charged with blasphemy. One of them was even killed. Others were actually, yeah. just with your as with your case, they were arrested by the state after the fundamentalists attacked them. The state, instead of defending them, decided to arrest them as well. And several and of them went And it is dangerous to even still now, after 20 years, it is dangerous to support me publicly in Bangladesh. The people who read me, read my books, read secretly because, uh, you know, because now fundamentalism is much more dangerous than before, than they were in 20 years ago. Because of the Islamization, fundamentalists uh, are having much strength. And I should, I blame the government for uh, making fundamentalists so strong. Because every time somebody protested against fundamentalists, government took action against them. Against the people who protest. Yeah, and yeah. in 20, you know, I am, I have not been allowed to enter my country. It was not that fundamentalists are preventing me from entering the country. It was the government. What about, I want to skip ahead a little bit because uh, you went to several European countries. You went to France and Sweden at different times. Eventually, you ended up at a place that should have been very hospitable to you, which was in India, which is supposed to be a secular country, and in Bengal, which is your home language, which, where you have an audience who reads you. So what happened there? You know, I lived in, uh, yeah, in Europe for many years, but always I wanted to go back to my country because my country uh, didn't allow me to enter. So I decided to go to Calcutta, where I could speak in Bengali, where I have lots of friends, and my books get published in Bengali from West Bengal. So for six years, actually, after uh, I left Bangladesh, I was not allowed to uh, go to India. I was not getting visa. 
But whenever I got visa, I started visiting Calcutta, especially Calcutta Book Fair. Then I started living there in 2004. It was, it was all right in the beginning, but uh, West Bengal government decided to throw me out of West Bengal only because I was physically attacked by Muslim fundamentalists in Hyderabad. Instead of supporting me, instead of defending me, West Bengal government decided to throw me out of This West was Bengal. a Marxist government at that yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're running out of time, so I want to bring it up. You had to leave Bengal. I had to leave Bengal. And you, and you were in, in very dangerous and situation, not having a permanent place to, to live. Yeah. What's happened since then? Where are you now? I am living in Delhi now. Mm, even the Indian government in 2008 put me under house arrest and forced me to leave India. I was forced to leave in India, but I didn't give up. I used to go back and ask for uh, you know, my residence permit. They issued me a resident permit, but the condition was that I, I should not, condition was that I should leave India. But in, since 2011, I started living in New Delhi, but the Indian government is not throwing me out yet. But if Muslim fundamentalists start any campaign against me, I know that Indian government would ask me to leave the country. So I don't have any ground beneath my feet. So our irony is that in India we now have a Hindu right government which at various times said that they would support the Slima because they're against Muslim fundamentalists. But they also in power have not been that supportive. So I think we may have to keep watching the situation, the Slima, and hearing that your voice is in silence. There was a television series that you wrote that was canceled in India, is that right? And uh, so Taslima is still embattled in India and in the politics of South Asia. And we wish you the best of luck. And we need to keep watching what's happening so that we can be there to support you. Thank you. Thank you.